All right, Dad, news from Ford, their big bet on electric vehicles. Well, uh, to say it's not paying off would be an understatement. The latest number coming out of Ford corporate, Dad, they're not going to lose $2.1 billion on electric vehicles this year. They're only going to lose $3 billion yes. on EVs. What is Ford's strategy, man? What's going on here? Well, they want to see how much they can uh, how much they can take out of their cash stockpile in order to underwrite their new EV division. Uh, they've increased their their expected loss from $2.1 billion to three billion. Now we're only in the middle of March. We're two and a half months <laughs> into the new year. Okay. And they've already adjusted upward by nine hundred million dollars the amount of loss that they anticipate for the year. That's only an expectation. I wouldn't be surprised if it was much more than that. And one of the reasons I say that is well Ford just keeps getting hit with more and more recalls. You just double-checked with NHTSA. They're up to 16 recalls in the first, what, 12 weeks, 11 weeks of the year? It's really kind of crazy. So the, the losses, I think, could be much more, especially if, if the ICE division doesn't make quite as much money as they were hoping. Well, but this is part of the new development at Ford. They, are, they have traditionally broken out their financial results by region. This will be the first year that they're breaking out financial results by business units. So ICE yes. versus Blue, uh, or Blue, excuse me, versus um, Model E. Now, here's the deal, Dad. Ford's EV landscape. Let's talk about it for a moment here. They got the Mustang Mach-E, the F-150 Lightning, and their E-Transit van. Yes. They have been pushing hard very hard into the EV world, so hard that they set up an entirely separate business unit, new executives, everything, its own PNL, the whole nine yards. It operates entirely differently than their internal combustion engine department. They also, Dad, have been investing heavily nationwide. They've got new manufacturing comple uh, complexes in Tennessee and Kentucky. So they are all in on electric vehicles. And I think their pitch to their investors is, hey, guys, just stay with us. We're gonna get we're gonna get out in the lead. We're gonna make a ton of money here. It's just a couple of years. We're gonna be losing a lot of money. But look, treat us like a startup. We're like Rivian or Lordstown or Faraday or anyone else. And you're right, Dad. The thing that's gonna cash flow that is their internal combustion engine business that then has been leading the league in recalls for now the second year in a row. So you're right, they do have interplay. Hey, you can get 25% off with our car buying help just by saying gold. 25. And dad, good news. You can also save 100 bucks on an extended warranty. Use gold 100. Offer ends at the end of the month. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Yes, saving of the gold for everybody concerned. And 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 here's the thing. You know, if you want to if you want to treat it as a as a typical EV startup company, well, they don't make money for a number of years. It was a long, long time into Tesla's history before they actually became profitable. So how long can Ford go draining the profits from, from their ICE division and their Ford Pro division, which is the commercial division, um, to underwrite this, this expectation of a growing EV business? I mean, they're saying that they expect to be able to produce 600,000 EVs by the end of next year and 2 million just a couple of years after that. Well, are there 2 million customers out there that want those EVs? <laughs> and at what cost to Ford to be able to produce th those vehicles? We know from uh, information gleaned from Ford and their dealer body that Ford states they don't make money selling the EVs to their dealers. And well, if they're expecting to lose three billion dollars this year, that would that would certainly mean that that's probably <laughs> correct. Um, the dealers complain because there's no margin built in the car. So if there's no margins for either Ford Motor Company or for their dealer body, how hard are the dealers going to push to sell those cars if they're not making any money on them? Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's a pretty – I think they're trying to paint a much rosier picture 
than what the actual picture will look like by the end of this year. Well, and they they suggest that, Ford's executives suggest that by 2026, it will be an 8% margin business for them compared to a 10% gross margin business or EBIT margin business for them. So they expect to go from $3 billion in losses because they're, a, they're a, an EV startup and you yes. are spot on. We've seen other EV startups lose a ton of money for a long period of time. There's an incredibly interesting statistic when you look at total cost to produce a single unit across different automakers what was it It was like a rivian cost like a million dollars to get one on the road so yeah yeah. (laughs) these new startups they lose that's fine that's fine so ford's going to spin that story but then they're going to say in a short period of time in three three years years, it's going to go to an eight percent margin business that's a that's a tough pill to swallow if i'm an investor and this to be clear is the core challenge for legacy automakers versus new companies in the ev space these legacy oems they're encumbered by their ICE divisions, like Volkswagen, for example. They're breaking out Scout, and others are approaching this in different ways. That thing is that thing is profitable. The ICE business has been profitable, will continue to be profitable. But the bet here is that they can take that cash flow, plug it into this loss of an EV business, and ultimately the EV business will be more profitable down the line. They're going to lose three billion dollars this year, man. Like that's a very tough pill for investors to swallow. Here's the question: If I was an investor, if I if I was on one of these. Uh, earnings calls. Okay, so you project in three years' time that you're going to go from negative um, profit in your EV division to an 8% margin. How? How? How is... A, how is that even possible? B, how? what are the plans in order to be able to do that? Um, you, you know, I... There was a time when I opened a golf store and I had to put together a five-year business plan. Okay. And so you come up with base numbers and then you say, okay, well, it's going to grow 10% and then it's going to grow 15%, you know, and, and all of it is a wag, a wild ass guess. Okay. (laughs) I mean, you're, 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 first of all, nobody, we've proven conclusively that nobody can predict the future. Okay, but, yep. and that and that means these businesses can't predict the future. They don't know what the economy is going to be three years from now. They don't know what the world stage is going to look like three years from now. So how do you go from saying we're going to lose three billion dollars on our EV division in 2023 to we're going to make an eight percent margin on our EV division in 2026? What's the plan? And you know, I, I'm sure there's a tremendous amount of corporate speak, but yes. my guess is there's not really a lot to back it up. All right, Pops, I'm very curious what viewers think about this topic. Do you think Ford's strategy is going to be a winner? Do you think it's going to be a loser? I'm very curious. I want to hear some thoughts in the comments because I find this to just be a fascinating development. Absolutely. That we've got these legacy companies been around for 100 plus years, and now, that, to be very clear, these are not lost making organizations. These are organizations that have been highly profitable for decades, intentionally taking on these losses. I just, I'm very curious to get our community's take on this one, Pops, and I'm glad we covered it here because $3 billion, that's a number that jumps off the page. Uh, it does to me. 